So, we'll start off looking at some of the slides. Some of for this for some of you is revision. You've looked at it before. This idea of um, tall, flat structures, centralization, decentralization. But and then we're going to look at it through a case study where you apply and you solve situations. In and you should be able to explain and define organizational structure, discuss advantages, disadvantages of tall and flat organization structures, and discuss the relationship <coughs> between organizational structures, centralization, and decentralization. And therefore, when we look at what organizational structure, whichever organization we go into, there's going to be a structure. The structure reflecting things like the hierarchy who has the power to make decisions so things about authority communications and carrying out and fulfilling the rights and the duties of organization the structure will determine how much power each person at particular points and levels within the organization have they will also reflect on how those responsibilities are assigned and how they are controlled and therefore how information flows between the different levels of management. So for example, I work with you on the foundation program but my immediate boss is Mr. Preston because he's the degree scheme coordinator and our boss, his boss is uh, Megan Williams, the director of learning and teaching. So basically, in terms of organizational structure, we can define it in terms of the relations, is a framework of relations on jobs, systems, operating process, people, and groups, making efforts to achieve these goals. This is what an organization structure is, and it's, it comes from Monavaran, Asgari, and Asna, writing in 2007. So that's a bit of an idea, and we want to play around uh, with that idea today. And this is it. 
So we can start to fill up organization structure. The chief executive officer, the CEO, and they will often have the board of directors around them. You've got your chief <coughs> operating officers these days, you have chief information officers, you have chief financial, you have chief human resources, and so on and so forth. And under each of them, you're going to have, of course, other managers, some of them senior managers, <coughs> some of them supervisors, junior managers, etc. Playing back to what we looked at last week. You're also going to have some managers who don't belong in departments but are directly responsible and directly communicate with the chief executive officer or in some places the managing director. And when you look at that chart, some people start to suggest to us that some of the problems we find in management is because of this hierarchy. The taller it is, for example, the longer the information has to flow back to the top decision maker. And that slows down business response as to what is happening. Allowing competitors, for example, to enter the market, allowing competitors who have flatter structures to react more quickly than a tall organization. You hear the term hierarchy, it refers to the level of responsibility within an organization and it's shown in vertical layers as we saw in the slides. The chain of command, the channel through which decisions are passed down between different levels in the organization and the span of control, a person who is directly responsible for another person. So a span of control may be supervisor A, who is responsible for five sales staff. That may be a narrow span of control. It may therefore encourage within that team a lot more communication and not more participation. Where the spans of control, for example, are wide, maybe you have 15, 20 people, you may start to have issues in terms of communication. This is the NHS in Mid Cheshire. The NHS, and you can see its structure chart. And when you start to look at this, there are lots of different points of responsibility. <coughs> this is a tall hierarchy. And therefore, you can see the different divisions, you may want to call them, or business or health units. If you look at ear, nose, and throat, it will have its own managers and supervisors right down to operation level. So you can imagine how tall this structure is. And therefore, you can imagine how much time, even with technology, it takes for information to flow back to the board. And the awareness that as information flows back and as information flows downwards as well, the information can, the intent of the information can be changed. And these are some of the issues that <coughs> we find in management. Advantages. Communication lines are clearer because it is well structured, therefore there is better <coughs> communication. When you look at that chart, you look at the promotional opportunities that are available to you. And people who are going out after their degrees, they do look at companies like this. Okay, I'm coming in at this point, how long is it going to take me to get X, Y, Z? What training is available, etc. Supervision is tight because of the many levels of management and the hierarchy, but there are some disadvantages. It's highly structured, so it's not flexible. It can't respond quickly to changes. The long chains of command can impact and can slow down decision making. Flat structures, we have wider spans of control. We take out the levels. And we talked about this last week in our lectures, where we talked about middle management and middle management being squeezed out. 
And I gave you some reading. When you have wider stands of control and a flatter structure, your managers, their responsibility broadens. We talked about this. We talked about middle managers. And we talked about how junior managers are taking on the responsibility of middle managers. And therefore, you've got in here some resources. Yes, I've given you where middle management are talking about feeling the squeeze. So for them, they are talking about this in terms, for example, of stress. So in the US, for example, similar figures for the UK, uh, two thirds of a recent survey of middle managers found that the downturn was having a negative impact on their work environment. And the source of this was Accenture. Accenture used to be, uh, used to be known or came out of, um, out of the, of the, out of the uh, Enron crisis. Yes? The middle managers tend to be squeezed in mind between the demands of the executive team, the strategic team, and also from the bottom, from their operational staff. People feel in the middle management that they are dissatisfied with their jobs or only somewhat satisfied. They want to take steps to improve the security of their jobs. Their companies could do more to help employees around these areas. So these are some of the things I would expect you to be reading, for example, and to bring into your discussion. I've put another resource there for you, and I hope you look at it. It talks about middle managers becoming obsolete. <coughs> the organization are becoming more flat. There's technology to take over their jobs, etc. And this is a flat structure. The manager and the employees. And this is how the Googles, the Microsofts, the Instagrams, the Snapchats, this is how they started. With the friends or the owners starting up the company and having a few employees. And therefore, reaction time was much faster, creativity, innovation as well. However, as companies grow and they employ more people, we start to standardize. It almost becomes inevitable. And as we standardize, we start to build hierarchies. And we know hierarchies affect things like creativity, etc because of information flow, etc., because of decision making. The question becomes, how, even though we're growing, how can we create this flatness within the organization? In the clip I showed you last week, we looked at how Google has tried to do that in terms of the way it structures its environment and the way it takes its uh, decisions. We also looked at people like Steve Jobs and, for example, how uh, they manage their senior team, etc. <coughs> Disadvantages, there are control issues, communication issues, because uh, the manager has a broader span of control, is responsible for many more people. The question becomes then, how do you devolve control to your team so that your team manages and controls itself? And I've asked you to have, go back and have a look at the, those URLs I gave you from CBS News and also from the Financial Post. There are some advantages. I've put one there for you. I'm expecting you to think about some of the other ones. You have fewer managers. You save money. But what about things like the loss of managerial control? How about things like communication? And when you're looking at management and you look at these things, what are some of the issues? You save money here, but if there's a negative impact here, it comes out and hits you also in money terms. The issue is that the advantage, you may save money now, get rid of your middle managers, cut out their expenses from 
Um, the sales revenue, immediately your profits go up. But in the next accounting period or the next three accounting periods, the problems you have here may be hitting you. Okay? Flat organizations, uh, they can be structured in different ways. Yes, we can have a team structure, a matrix structure within them, and sometimes there's confusion. Who is responsible for what? And therefore, that takes us into this idea of centralization, where we concentrate the decision making at the top of the organization like a pyramid. For example, if you look <coughs> at people like Lloyds Bank and Sainsbury's, the branch managers there do not have a lot of power. They are branch managers, but they are told what to do, and they report to head office. They are tightly controlled. And the question is not if this is right or is it wrong, but is it appropriate? This is a bank. And you have to think that your capital is at risk. So how do you control your managers in the branches, for example? You don't want maybe your managers to be able to give loans of 10 million or above, because that may be more of a risk. So you may set their ability to give loans, for example, at maybe half a million, and use the technology to control them. If it goes a penny, a pound over half a million, automatically the system stops them from approving. They have to go the next level up for approval. Again, there are advantages and disadvantages here. The <coughs> decisions are based on strategic and operational overview of the company. You have faster communication. You have consistency. The disadvantages, you don't delegate. And this can affect managers' motivation and their growth. It can affect response time. And you can lose some of your business opportunity and have low job satisfaction and motivation. So you have some work to do, yes. You would be looking at three to five slides on decentralization, the advantage and disadvantages. And you should relate your discussion to tall and flat organizational structures and give real life examples. <coughs> and for that, I'm going to give you this. You can work in pairs. 